everyone welcome back to winging it we're in week seven and we're working on a garden themed quilt we're building it block by block each week and we have done six panels already i will link that playlist at the top of the screen so that you can catch up if you want to if you haven't made any of our other blocks don't panic because each block does work as a standalone piece and so we're going to learn some different techniques today and have a little bit of fun with our fabrics so i thought i'd start off by taking you around the resources on my table i've got a selection of fabrics this blue stripe is going to be my base fabric for this block this is a five mil stripe so if you want to find something similar you just need to make sure that you're looking for five millimeter stripes i've got some bright green fabric it's actually quite a lot brighter than it looks on camera it's a nice strong grassy green and i think that contrasts quite well i've also got a scrap of white fabric and this is actually a piece of vintage tablecloth that i've just taken a piece out of and i've got that handy because i'm going to do some embroidery i've also got a green ribbon this is a stitched edge ribbon that matches my green fabric and i'm just going to use that later for a bit of embellishment I've got my selection of threads, so I've got my dark green that I'm using for lettering. This is Anchor 683. I've also got my yellow, which is Anchor 298. I've got my red, which is Anchor 46. Blue, which is 130. And I've also got my mid brown, which is Anchor 480. Then I've got a selection of marking tools. So I've got my pencil, I've got a couple of heat erase pens and I've got my water erase pen that we've used a couple of times because we are going to be using a bit of bonder web. I have got some bonder web, it's off camera. Now I've got my scissors, embroidery scissors and paper scissors. Now the other thing you might find useful this week is a template and this is available for just £1 to download from our website. I'll put a clickable link in the description below so that you can go and find that if you want it. It just helps me to cover the cost of making these videos and keep my channel going. So it's uh, just a nominal fee to download that. And this week we're going to be making some seed labels and we're going to build our panel from the surface layer down right back towards the backing fabric so we're going to work first on the things that are going to be on the top which is the flowers now we're going to be using satin stitch to stitch these and although in principle it's a really straightforward stitch it is actually quite tricky to get a really good finish so i will link my stitch video where i talked about fill stitches because I do give you some helpful tips to just get the best finish possible with your satin stitch so it is worth going and checking that out. I've brought in my light box, I've put my pattern on my light box and I've got my white fabric over the top of my pattern and I'm just using my heat erase pen here to sketch out the flower shapes onto my cotton. I'm also going to sketch in the boxes because it's just going to help me stay accurate um, and give me a bit of a sense of where the limitations of the panel are so that if my stitching goes awry I can just make sure that I don't have to cut my stitching. I can also group them together because I'm going to cut each of these out individually so although it looks like I'm using quite a lot of fabric here I can actually limit the amount that I'm going to use. Now satin stitch can pull on your fabric and tension is really important so I'm going to be using a ring to embroider these and if you've never used an embroidery ring before they are not complicated at all you basically separate out the two parts of the ring so you twist the screw until the solid ring comes out and you lay that solid ring flat on your table then you lay your fabric over the top and make sure your design is centered so that you've got space around the edges to form your stitches and then I'm just going to tighten up the screw at the top of the ring 
just enough so that it can slide over the top of the fabric but not so loose that it is baggy because what we want is when we push down on that surface ring it's going to pull the fabric nice and tight for us so you can see there that the fabric has stretched out as that ring has gone over the top then I'm just going to tighten up the screw as tight as I possibly can just easing the fabric through as I do that you need to be quite careful with pulling on the fabric you can distort the fabric and stretch it out of shape and you can also distort your designs inside the hoop so the best way of stretching out your fabric I'm just going to trim off the excess there so I haven't got too much to work with the best way of straightening out your fabric is corner to corner so if you get diagonally opposite corners and pull in towards the center at the back it will stretch your fabric evenly and then you tighten up that screw as much as you possibly can and you're looking for it to be drum tight so when you tap on the surface of the fabric it should sound a little bit like a drum so I'm just stretching that a little bit more and I'm quite happy that that is nice and tight now so I'm ready to stitch. I've got two strands of my yellow thread here. I've threaded them up into my needle and I have knotted the end. Now normally we just are happy with using knots and when we're going to be using felt or wadding knots are fine because the felt will absorb the lump of the knot but this is going to be added as a surface fabric on top of other fabrics we don't really want any lumps and bumps so we're going to start finish our thread in a slightly different way today we're going to make use of a waist knot and that's going to mean that our stitching is going to lie really beautifully flat with no lumps in it so I've got a knot in the end of my thread and I'm taking my needle through my fabric from front to back and that's going to mean that my knot is sitting on the surface of the fabric and I just want to go a little bit away from where I want to stitch. So you can see the knot there is just sitting just outside of the box. And I'm going to bring my needle up inside one of the petals of the flower so anywhere where you're going to stitch is fine and I'm going to make two tiny little seed stitches so these are just straight stitches that are worked at slightly different angles and you just need two really small stitches you can do three or four if you want to be extra secure but two tends to work fine and they are going to be covered over so as I stitch we're going to hide those tiny stitches and we won't see them at all. So to start off my satin stitch I'm actually going to come up at the centre on the outside of my first petal and you can stitch from left to right but I find that if you want to get a perfect angle it tends to be better to work at the centre. So I've brought my needle up there on the outside edge of that first petal. And for my first stitch, I like to get the angle right by just laying the thread across the direction that I want to stitch in. And it just helps me make sure it's going to be straight. So I've laid my thread there and then I'm just tucking my needle just underneath it and taking it back down through the fabric at the outside of the flower centre and that gives me a really nice straight vertical line to start with. Now I'm going to come up back on the edge of the petal again right next to that first stitch and I want to keep my stitches as close together as I possibly can and just add another stitch there that sits alongside it. Then I come back up at the edge again just a little bit further round and take my needle back down next to the previous stitch at the flower centre. Now because we're working around a circle it does help if your stitches are ever so slightly angled so they're going to be slightly more packed together at the flower centre than they are at the outside. There's just a very tiny bit of angling going here just so that we are creating a, a sort of set of radiating lines that are coming out from that flower centre and I'm going to go 
right up to the beginning of the next petal and when I'm happy with that I'm going to come back up at the centre again at the outside edge and work some stitches to the right. That's my first petal and if you're worried about lumps and bumps you can burnish your stitching by just stroking it with the side of your needle just rubbing your needle over the surface and it helps even out any lumps or bumps that you might have created. So I'm working clockwise now I'm going to my next petal and I'm just going to repeat exactly the same process. So I'm coming up on the outside edge at the centre of the petal, laying my thread across the centre there just to make sure the angle's right and then going back down at the flower centre. Then I come up at the outside edge again right next to that first stitch and work some more straight stitches working to the left and then out again to the right. And I'm going to do exactly the same on every single petal around this flower. So I'm just going to work my way around, taking my time so that I get the best finish possible, stitching in each of those petals of my daisy. Now, you might be wondering about that knot. We've got some stitching in place now and so we can actually get rid of this knot and what I'm going to do is just lift it up and snip it off on the surface. And then I'm going to flip over to the back and any excess thread there trailing, I'm just going to snip that off. And that leaves us with a completely smooth, knot free piece of embroidery that's going to sit completely flat when we add it onto the next layer of fabric. So there's my daisy all stitched and I want to now work the centre of the flower. I just want to show you how I've been finishing off my thread. So if I turn to the back, I'm just going to check where my last stitch came out and I'm going to slide my needle underneath some of the stitches on the back. That's all I'm going to do. There's no knot needed. I'm just going to slide my needle through a decent number of stitches and then snip it off and because we're going to attach this to another layer that is really secure plenty secure enough it's going to cause no problems and um, that won't come undone so to work the center of the flower i'm going to start off my thread in exactly the same way so i've made a waist knot and I'm going to put my two little stitches in the centre. These are all going to be covered up so I don't need to worry. And the first thing I'm going to do is add some straight stitches to create a bit of blend from the centre of the flower out into the petal. So I've got two stitches of my mid brown thread here and I'm just going to work my way around the petals adding in some straight stitches different lengths, I'm going to keep it varied, I'm going to put some closer together than, than others, make some stitches longer than others and I'm just going to add in these little stitches coming up into the petals just to create a sense that the flower is getting darker as we work to the centre. So this is really simple, I'm just going to go all the way around, I'm tucking my needle in between those satin stitches that I put in earlier. Now I'm going to finish off the centre by filling it with French knots. So we're going to bring our thread through and pull it towards us and we're going to sit our needle on the thread and wrap the thread over the needle twice and you want to have it tight enough so that you should be able to move your needle freely just like that. Wrap twice and then we're going to take our needle back down just a little distance away from where the thread came out. And we're going to hold on to our working thread until the very last minute. And when we take our thread back through, we should find that it leaves us with a nice neat knot. So I'm just going to show you that again. Bring the thread through and pull it towards us. Sit the needle horizontally on the thread wrap the thread over the needle twice and then take the needle back down keeping hold of that working thread.
So I've filled in the centre of my daisy now and I'm just showing you that I'm working my poppy petals in exactly the same way. So again, I'm starting at the centre of the petal and satin stitching out. I've started going out to the right first of all this time and then I'm going to slide my needle under those stitches at the back to get to the left hand side and then I'm just going to satin stitch the left hand side of the petal as well. And then I'm just going to work the next petal in exactly the same way. And you can see there that I've started with a petal that is going to be towards the back. So I'm working backwards to forwards on this flower so that the petals overlap each other. So that's my three flowers stitched. I've worked the poppy centre in the same way as I worked the daisy. And the lobelia has just got some white satin stitch at the centre for that little teardrop shape. So I've taken my fabric out of my ring and I'm ready to trim those down shortly. But I just want to set up the rest of the panel first. I've brought my light box back and I've got some bond web now and I just want to trace around the outside of the shapes of my seed labels because I thought it might be easier to bond web this down. It's going to bind the edges of each shape so that they don't fray as well. So I've got the glue side down on top of my pattern and the paper side up and I'm just tracing over those shapes. I can keep them quite close together because they're all going to be done from the same colour. I'm going to cut those out roughly. We'll get on to the more precise cutting once we've attached it to the fabric and I'm not at this point worrying about tracing the lettering. I just want the shapes. Got my green fabric here on my ironing mat and I'm just going to lay the glue side down and the paper side up onto the back of my fabric. Now my fabric doesn't have a back and a front but if you are using a pattern fabric just make sure you're attaching this to the wrong side of the fabric. And this is quite a big piece so I'm starting by pressing it on the left hand side and I'm not lifting my iron, I'm sliding it slowly to the right bit by bit just allowing the glue to fuse to the fabric and by doing it this way I'm making sure that I'm not catching in any air and I'm not creating creases in that fabric or in the bond web so I'm just pushing the bond web flat by sliding my iron from left to right. Now I can see through I hope you can see through as well because I'm using my light box I can see the pencil lines through the fabric so I'm just going to line them up with the template underneath and I'm now working on the right side of the fabric so the side that there's no bond web on and I'm just tracing in the lettering for my seed labels. I'm using my water erase pen here because we are going to iron these onto the backing fabric and I don't want to lose my lines. So I'm just making sure I've got one of each seed label and then I can cut them out precisely following the lines and I am almost ready to attach them to my backing fabric. As I say, doing it this way means that there's glue all over those pieces of fabric. So it makes sure that the fabric's not going to fray while I'm working with it. So I've got my light box back again and now I'm lining up my backing fabric for my quilt block with the outside square on the pattern. And this is going to help me position my labels and make sure they're in the right place. So I'm just peeling the paper backing off my seed label. Just give it a little bit of a tear so that you've got something to get hold of. And I want to make sure I'm getting the right seed label in the right place. And I want to make sure that I'm putting glue side down. And it will sort of stick a little bit. It just makes the fabrics stick together just enough for you to get your ironing pad back out and I'm just pressing those in place with a medium iron holding the iron 
over the fabric for about 10 to 15 seconds just to make sure that the glue is melted and the layers are stuck together and because we've used our water erase pen you can see that my lettering is still in place for me to stitch it so now i'm going to cut out my little flower panels so I'm just going to put some bonder web on the back. I'm just roughly cutting out rectangles that are a little bit bigger than the pieces that I need and just sticking them onto the back there. And then I'm drawing around the boxes again onto the right side of the fabric. And again, I've used my water erase pen there and I can cut them out precisely. And that means that they are completely covered in bond web on the back. So again, I'm going to take off my paper backing and I definitely want to make sure I'm getting the right flower with the right seed label. So Lobelia goes on the left and I'm just going to position that so that there's a little bit of green border all the way around and I'm just holding my iron down to make sure that that sticks and we are going to add some stitching so don't worry too much about this so then I add my daisy in exactly the same way and then my little poppy label goes on as well And now we can add our surface stitching. So we're going to keep this really simple. I've got some white thread here, two strands, and I've knotted the end. And you might be able to see that there are some little holes in the edge of that piece. That's because I was going to do blanket stitch and tried it and thought it just looked too busy. You can do blanket stitch if you want to. You can stitch this in whatever way you like, but I'm going to keep it really simple and just stitch around my flower shape in some running stitch. So two strands of white thread and I'm just going to do some little tiny running stitches around the outside edge. In hindsight, it might have looked nice to do it in blue or in green, but I was happy enough with the white, so I decided I was going to leave it. So I'm just trying to make sure that my stitches are nice and even and that the spaces between them are smaller than the actual stitches because I just think that looks much more professional, much neater. There we go. And we can just finish this off on the back with a knot. And it doesn't matter about the knot here because this will eventually go against some quilt wadding and that will just absorb a lump of the knot. So it's not too big a deal. So I will do the poppy and the lobelia, but I just want to complete a label on camera for you. So I've now got two strands of my dark green 683 and I'm going to go around the green fabric now in exactly the same way, adding running stitch all around the outside. And this stitching adds obviously a decorative element, but it also means that as you use and wash your quilt, that bonder web won't fail and you won't have bits dropping off your quilt it's going to make everything more secure so i've added in my running stitch and my last job is to add in my lettering i'm going to use whipped back stitch for this i will put a tutorial in a card at the top of the screen so that if you're not familiar with this stitch you can go and learn it slowly in a full tutorial but I will try and explain what I'm doing. So first of all, I'm going to backstitch the shape of the letter D. I want to keep my stitches nice and even. I'm going to try and get three stitches along the length of the letter. So we start by coming up a stitch length away from where we want our line to start and we come back to the beginning of the line and then work forwards two stitch lengths so that we create a gap between our first stitch and second stitch 
and then come back to the beginning of the first stitch and we keep going all the way around just turning the corner whenever we need to following the line of the shape of the letter now don't worry if your stitching is a little bit wobbly in places because the whipping process is going to even out any wobbliness and unevenness in those stitches and you end up with a really neat solid line that that looks actually far more precise than maybe it is so I'm just putting in that last stitch to close up the gap and I'm going to bring my needle back up at the very beginning of the line where we started so I've got my letter D in there and I'm just bringing my needle up right at the beginning of that first stitch now we're not going to go through the fabric we're going to slide our needle underneath the stitches that we've made so I've just slid my needle under that first stitch there from bottom to top and then I'm going to do exactly the same with the second stitch so I'm always going in the same direction from outside to inside the letter pulling it through there and then adding in that third whipped stitch and then again I'm going to turn my work as I go to make sure that I'm always going in the same direction so I'm always working from outside the letter to inside the letter and whipping under every stitch that I've made, every back stitch that I've made. And I'm just going to work my way around the entire letter in that way. And then when I get back to the beginning, I'm going to take my thread back through to the back of the fabric and move on to my next letter. So you can see there that the whipping of that back stitch makes it a much more defined and solid line. So I'm going to put the rest of those stitches in and then we'll come back and add some finishing touches. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to remove that water erase pen. So I did the outline there and the lettering in water erase pen. I've just got a spritzer bottle here and I'm just going to spray it maybe once or twice and you should see that that bright blue ink at the edge of that rectangle just disappears and I'm going to give it a couple of seconds and anywhere that hasn't quite disappeared I'm just going to give another spray so I reckon maybe two or three spritzes will get rid of all the pen marks on the surface of our seed labels. I do find that if you try and dry it with an iron really quickly the ink can come back so just let it dry naturally um, and you will find that the ink has gone and won't return. The last thing I want to do is add a little bit of ribbon as a finishing touch and I'm just trying to work out where I want to put it. I think across the top is going to work best. So I'm just trimming off just enough ribbon to make sure that it doesn't fray back and I end up having a mess at the edge of my panel. I've got some of my green thread here that matches the ribbon and I've just got a single strand. I'm going to just pin my ribbon in place and I'm working from left to right here because if you do the two ends first you may end up with your ribbon puckering and not being quite flat so you can see I'm smoothing the ribbon out to the right there as I go along this is just going to hold my ribbon in place and help me stitch it on neatly and in a straight line So now I've got my single strand of thread and I'm going to stitch this on with an applique stitch. So I'm coming up through both layers of fabric, through the backing fabric and the ribbon, just inside the edge of the ribbon. And then I take my needle back down, tucking it right in against the ribbon, but taking it through just the backing fabric. And that puts a little tiny stitch 
over the edge of the ribbon to hold it in place and I'm just going to work my way along both sides of the ribbon in that way just to hold it in place. And there we have our finished panel. So you can see I've just trimmed off the edges of the ribbon there and that ribbon is going to sit quite close to our seam when we join this block to the block around it. So we've got our three seed labels with our embroidered flowers and our lettering. I really like this one. It's right up my street. I, I was really happy with the way this one turned out. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please do give us a like. It helps other people find our videos and we really appreciate it. Do share your work at hashtag FSH23quilt and so that we can see all of our seed label pieces together you can also add hashtag FSH23quilt7. If you've enjoyed this project and would like something similar I will link a video at the bottom down here and I'll put a video up here that is best for you. If you want to subscribe you can click on our logo down here it makes it really easy for you we post videos like this every week can't wait to see what you create thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye